What's going on dudes? I got some headquarters on stadium here. And this is a pretty old gameplay. This is probably from within the first week or two that this map pack came out that Stadium was in. So uh, just keep that in mind. Pretty old gameplay. Um, but today I'm not talking about the gameplay. I'm going to give you guys some basic tips that you can use to make yourself a better player uh, in Call of Duty games. And most of these tips will work for you know any Call of Duty game. Call of Duty 4, World at War, Modern Warfare 2, or uh, now Black Ops. Um, and I'm going to kind of start at the bottom of my list. Uh, and then work my way up towards like the most important things uh, At the bottom of my list. This is probably just as important as some of the things at the top, but Like in the scheme of my list. It's got to be at the bottom uh, know your limits And what I mean by that is you need to know what kind of player you are and what kind of kill streaks You need to run and what guns you need to use and things like that like if if you're an, if you're not a rusher if you can't just run out into the middle of the map and you know get some kills and stuff like that then you know you maybe you need to play more defensive and move a little slower you don't have to be like <laughs> uh you know like x jaws or somebody like out here just totally crushing every game you know you can play more defensive and you know get some uavs um or some counter spy planes or some napalm strikes you know lower kill streaks that are still going to help your team out um and then that goes along with kill streaks you need to know which kill streaks you can pick you know, obviously, if you can't get Blackbird, Chopper Gunner, and Dogs, like those high kill streaks, 8, 9, and 11, then obviously you don't need to run those. Uh, you're going to help your team a lot more by just running the lowest kill streaks, which are Spy Plane, Counter Spy Plane, and Care Package, or even Napalm Strike. Uh, and then, especially if you run Hardline with those, you can get all three of your kill streaks with a four kill streak. So, uh, that's a that's a pretty nice tip there. It seems kind of like common sense, you know. You don't want to run kill streaks. You don't want you can't get, but people are so obsessed with getting blackbirds and chopper gunners and stuff that you know they'll run those kill streaks all like an entire week and maybe get them a couple times. You know that doesn't really help your team. Um, and then knowing what guns you can pick, like see, you, you, I'm using the FAMAS here. Um, and when we team up and play headquarters like this back in the day, like everybody on our team would use a FAMAS because, you know, we're trying to crush them. We're trying to beat them as bad as we can. So we would use the best gun, the FAMAS, you know. So it depends on your mood, really. A lot of people like to play this game just to have fun and they try out different things. But, you know, if you're trying really hard, you know, pick your favorite gun. Don't be afraid. Like, I could care less if people talk crap in the lobby that I'm using the FAMAS and things like that. But. You know, if you're really trying to do good, don't be afraid to use whatever weapon. Like, if there's another weapon that comes out soon that everybody, like the AUG or something that gets declared the best gun, you know, don't be afraid to use it just because people say stuff like that. Um, so just know your limits, pretty much. Um, the next thing on my list is teammates. Um, I would suggest playing with a team. You know, this isn't, like, on the top of the list because, you know, you can play team deathmatch or even free-for-all and stuff, and you don't need a team to win and do good. Um, so that's why it's kind of at the bottom of the list. But if you're playing like objective based games and you get a team together that you can play with pretty, pretty regularly, you're going to win more often than not just based off of teamwork. Even if you guys don't have as much skill as the other players, if they're not working together and you are, uh, you're going to find that you're going to win a lot more often than, uh, if you were all si if there was like six players playing solo, um, and that's pretty much it about teammates. Uh, the next thing that I have on my list is map awareness. You want to be able to know all the maps. You need to know your routes when you're start. Like when you spawn, you need to like already know where you're going. You know, um, and that just comes with practice and time of playing the game. You know, obviously you're not going to know the maps the first time you play them. And that's why when the new map packs come out, you probably feel like you don't like these maps or there's something wrong with them or. You know, things like that, people start to talk trash about the new maps, but really it's just that they don't know the new maps yet. You know, it's like they haven't given them a chance really. Um, and they go play on these old maps and they crush because they know the maps and they've been playing them for months now. So uh, once you get that feeling with these maps, like right now Stadium and all these all these maps that I used to like not like when the map pack came out, now I feel okay because, you know, I do better at them because I've played them so much now. Um and you kind of figure out where the spawns are and something else that goes along with map awareness is spawns uh, like you'll start to realize when you're looking at your mini map um, when your team is at a certain spot you'll figure out where the other team is spawning at you know it's just things like that come along with uh, map awareness and playing the game enough um, and moving on uh, no drugs or alcohol this seems kind of like another common sense one but there's a lot of people that play this game that 
either are drinking or are high when they're playing. I hear so many people in the lobbies being like, "Oh, I'm so drunk and stuff," but then they like they talk shit to you when they're losing. It's like, you know, obviously they have to know that they're losing because they're drinking or whatever. Um, so you know, if you're if you're actually trying to do good, but I you know I know that a lot of people play this game just to have fun and just to have a good time. So if that's your if that's your case, then I mean. Go ahead, drink and smoke all you want. I mean, I don't really care. But, uh, like, if you're actually trying to make yourself a better player, be sure not to be drinking or smoking anything while you're playing. Um, again, that seems common sense, but, you know, a lot of people do that. Uh, next on my list is your sensitivity level. Uh, you can go into your options and change your sensitivity. I play on sensitivity 3, uh, but actually, in every Call of Duty game, it's been... A different sensitivity on Call of Duty 4 I was such a noob I didn't even know what sensitivity was so I played on whatever the default sensitivity was um, and then World at War was probably the same way I don't I don't think I was watching any Call of Duty videos into World at War I think I was still pretty much a noob just playing on the default settings then Modern Warfare 2 came out and I played on sensitivity 4 or 5 or something and then Black Ops came out, and I played on the D. I played on medium for a really long time, which is the default on Black Ops. And then I moved it up to level three uh, one day. And I actually feel like I need to move it up to four now. It's getting kind of you know slow for me. But that's pretty much what you do. You can play on default until you feel like it, the sensitivity is moving too slow for you, and then you just move it up a notch and move it up a notch. Um, and there's like a big argument out there that says if you don't run like 10 sensitivity, then you suck. And that's the biggest crock of shit ever. You know, you need to run whatever sensitivity you want to run. That kind of goes back to know your limits. Um, you need to pick the sensitivity that's best for you. So you can just go into like a private match or a combat training and put it on medium and then move it up one notch at a time and see which one you feel most comfortable with. That would be my suggestion. Um, and that's it for that. Next on my list is tactical layout. Uh, now this, there's so many things that go into tactical layout. Uh, the main one is drop shotting. Everybody hates drop shotting. Uh, first of all, anybody that doesn't know, tactical layout basically switches the, the right stick and the B button. So, you know, under default settings, you click the right stick to knife and you press the B button to crouch and hold the B button to go prone. Uh, now on tactical layout, you press the B button to knife and you click the right stick to go to crouch and then you hold down the right stick to go prone like right there you saw me shoot that guy and then duck right here underneath of that to reload like I would have never been able to do that as smoothly as I did with uh, with their default layout I, you know I have to have tactical to be able to go prone and get into cover and things like that um, it's really like a more tactical gameplay I'm sure that's why it's called the tactical layout um, and then also the knifing um, like under the default settings when you just have to click the right stick and you're moving around with the right stick and things like that and you come across a corner all you have to do is just you know push down your right thumb just a little bit and you're gonna kill the guy like instantly with a knife and that's kind of what people hate about the default layout and they call it clinch knifing um, but if you're using the tactical layout you would actually have to think that you want to knife the person and move your thumb off of the stick and press the B button so that's kind of where I'm at with it I kind of feel like the tactical layout is better but that that arguments gonna go on forever like there it's never gonna be one definitive answer because the people that like default layout are gonna talk about drop shotting and the people that like tactical layout are gonna talk about knifing so you know really it's just your preference again going back to know your limits <laughs> that probably should have been high on the list but uh, anyways moving on here number two on the list is your your mini map you know look at your mini map there's so many players that do not look at their mini map um, you know you don't have to have a spy plane up like so when you have a spy plane up every three seconds it swipes the radar for anybody that doesn't have the ghost perk on and it's gonna show you their location and uh, if you get more than one UAV it'll double your time so like if I call on a spy plane and it's going at three seconds and then another one of my teammates calls in a spy plane, it'll it'll swipe every second and a half. So every time you get a spy plane, it'll double like that. Um, and then it lasts for like 30 seconds, I believe. And um, yeah, you just want to pay attention, man. Like I've stood behind people before just to be a dick and like shot off my weapon and shot off my weapon and like they didn't know I was there. Like how do you not see me? Um, and you know, even if you don't have a spy plane up, uh, you still can see people on the map that shoot their guns off when they don't have silencers. 
you know, and that counts ballistic knives and, you know, crossbows and things like every every gun that doesn't have a suppressor on it gets shown up on the radar when you fire it. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it as much as uh, the, the mini-map goes. You just need to always keep an eye on it, and especially if we have a Blackbird up, like you saw kind of during this time that I was talking, I had a Blackbird up, and that shows where every enemy is at, even if they're wearing the Ghost perk. So, uh, you know, that's kind of why everybody considers the Blackbird, you know, the the pretty best kill streak in the game just because you get 45 sec 40 to 45 seconds of knowing where every enemy is at so you can pretty much uh <laughs> not die at all that entire time but anyways i feel like that's it about the the mini map just you know it's i can't even stress how important it is to just keep your eye on the mini map obviously you don't want to be staring at it the entire game but uh, another tip that you can have with the mini map is you can hit the star button in the middle of the game and it brings up an entire map uh, during the pause menu. So obviously you can't do that for so long or you'll just be standing out in the open and somebody can kill you. But if you want, if you got a blackbird up or a spy plane up and you want to see exactly where they're at, you can hit the start button real quick and pull up your map uh, to see. And uh, now the number one thing on my list is... Uh, you need a headset, uh, and I'm probably going to go over on time here, but I'm just going to finish this thought and put a little something behind it. Um, but it looks like I went 43 and 5 on this game. Five captures, two defends, and uh, yeah, pretty beast right there. <laughs> I don't even know how many enemies we went through. I'm sure a lot of people left and came back. Uh, but anyways, you want to have a headset. Um, now, headsets help you like hear so many things that you can't hear. Like If you're just using your regular TV set, you're not gonna win I mean <laughs> you're such a disadvantage to people like me that have headsets um, you can hear the planting and diffusing sounds on the bomb so much better like in from so far away I can be so far away from the bomb and search and destroy and I'll be defending it and I can hear when you start diffusing and I can just pop out and kill you so you know if you don't have that advantage in search and destroy you're kind of screwed um, and even in every game mode you can hear like footstep sounds that's more modern warfare 2 the footstep sounds but you can still hear footstep sounds in black ops um, and then what else do we have uh, you hear like clanking like if somebody's running on metal you can hear that clanking going on um, and on certain maps you start to decipher different sounds from coming from a certain direction so you know it's so help I can't even stress how important it is to to learn the sounds once you get a headset so it's probably gonna take you a week or two once you get a headset to like know the sounds and everything and then you can also change the sound settings in black ops like you can go into black ops and you have voice volume sound effects volume um, music volume and master volume now when I'm playing on multiplayer I'll turn the voice down a little bit and the music down a little bit and leave the sound effects up because that's what the footsteps are the footsteps are in the sound effects column so I'll leave that one higher than the rest so I can try to hear footsteps but if I'm playing zombies I turn most of the volumes down and leave the voice up because the voice is what the, zo the noise the zombies make to, to start running after you and you can really hear what direction they're coming from pretty well um, and headsets range anywhere from like fifty dollars all the way to like two hundred and fifty. So you know you can do some research and pick the one that's best for you. And uh, that's that, man. That is my list. Uh, if you have any comments um, or questions, you can leave them in the comments section. If you feel like I left something out, you can put that in the comments section as well. And uh, I'll talk to you guys later. And y'all have a good day.